Good morning, folks. Sip of coffee or whatever is needed to up the brain function. No mercy on the science onslaught today, beginning at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours were mostly quiet. But you may have noticed towards the end of the opening sequence, a small eruption occurred bottom left. It's the incoming active region on the south, and we will be watching this one closely as she heads over the limb into view. Solar wind took things in another direction, plasma speed descending under 300 kilometers per second this morning, which is tremendously weak, and if geomagnetic conditions go any lower, we'll be entering cosmic ray health alert territory. Eyes on that today. Let's start with sun science and check out a mapping of the global magnetic fields, showing the white coronal field arches and the north and south interplanetary fields in red and blue. These are important studies because they represent the overarching fields above would-be sunspots, and this can help you predict solar flares. Back in 2015, we first noticed flare patterns with long-lived active regions, even while magnitude varied. Towards the end of 2016, we hit the subject again as scientists began noticing the patterns. That was in the morning news show, and here we are in 2020, and a look back at a flare sequence in 2012 is offering this science a chance to get into the Astrophysical Journal. Up top in the line graphs is where we see the patterns between the three flares. Even though the curves are not identical, notice how all three rises to the curve have hitches at the start. The third hitch should have told them the flaring was about to become more intense. These are the types of patterns we first mentioned in January of 2015, and they are the number one avenue forward to predict solar flares. Up next, we're out at the largest asteroid of the main belt, a metallic asteroid they hope to visit in a few years. And they say it's the remnant of a planet that never formed or perhaps was destroyed, but either way, they are attempting to figure out how some of its craters formed. Link to that one is below. But we're sticking with the asteroid belt for the bigger story at Ceres, where the bright spots at Akator Crater and other places around the surface have now finally, officially been declared to be from salt water below. Folks, they know Mars has layer after layer of ice. Pluto has an ocean under its ice, as do a few moons of Jupiter and Saturn. Looking at Ceres this morning, I ask, just what sort of solar system is this? Folks, this one is big in cosmology. After years of failure finding wimp dark matter, a number of those scientists gave up. Nearly the entire field noticeably shifted to axion searches last year. And earlier this year, a blow was dealt by Chandra looking at Perseus where a serious no detection of axions was made and string theory was also dealt a major blow. Now, here, we find a similar search at other clusters with the same, no axions. Over a decade of major WIMP dark matter failures has pretty much been equaled in a few months for axions with only two major studies. Let's do some climate science next. Where have I heard this before? These scientists taking their cues from Al Gore's crystal ball. As you know, we're now a decade past when they first told us the ice would be gone and they are trying to compare modern events with the last interglacial over 100,000 years ago. But no math or comparison can change the fact that this part of the world gets six months of darkness. There's no stopping the ice there. So on to something real, and it's almost a head shaker what climate scientists say sometimes. All that extra rain they are predicting with global warming, get this, scientists are astounded to find that it may help the plants. Apparently, plants like water just like you do. Did you know that? The genius of these climate scientists to identify water as a friend to plants is just, well, genius. Up next, something real and new in terms of science. The upper atmosphere vertical winds go much higher than previously believed. And of course, this is because they must interact with ionospheric layers as part of the global electric circuit. The higher they go, the more integrated into the circuit they are. And so now reconsider yesterday's top story about how even major, orders of magnitude, space weather impacts on the ionosphere can't stop their settling of the electric current system in as little as one minute. And realize, these are less like separated layers, but more like electrode interactions that immediately transfer energy between the Earth and space systems, directly related global electric circuit articles there in back-to-back -back days. Now, last but not least, folks, a week after we noticed NASA accidentally released the cover photo for their South Atlantic Magnetic Anomaly video, 
the video has finally been given to us. They have the last five years observations and the next five forecast. Things to notice include the continued weakening magnetic field strength of our planet, except for the places towards which the magnetic poles are actually shifting. The magnetic excursion of Earth is continuing, and the South Atlantic anomaly is splitting into two pieces as it grows, like mitosis, and they are expected to continue to do so into the future, helping to drive the continuation of the ongoing electromagnetic shift of this planet. Of course, it's really the shift of the entire solar system. We've got more information in the playlist below this video, also on our channel page, and at suspiciousobservers.org. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.